Hey folks, this is part two of building this particular rod. This is going to be my, uh, my jackhammer rod for the most part. I may actually use it for some crankbait fishing as well. But I have it set up on this Alps rod wrapper and dryer. Um, basically, you got a chuck that holds holds the butt, which I've already done, the, the fighting butt and the rear grip and then the real seat and foregrip. Did that the other day, that's part one. So if you haven't watched that, go back and watch it. Uh, in each one of these little locations, there are these, these three little wheels that hold it in place. I have three of them set up to really stabilize that. And I got a little pedal here that, uh, as I as I push that it starts to move it very slowly and uh, this is the this is the thread I'm using uh, it's nice bright orange I like the bright colors um, just think they're gonna show up good in my videos um, what's what's really important to come back to this um, to these two pieces of paper one is you know and again it's all available at the the Batson website. All of the different um, components, and in particular, we're going to be looking at all the different, um, you know, the different guides, and then the tip top. Uh, I've laid them out here on this this build sheet. Moving left for, to right, we're actually missing this one because it's already on there. Um, but you know, they're numbered for what the part is. And it corresponds to what we got right there. So titanium, double foot titanium guide, ring size 10. It's right there. And then it gives you the distance from the tip. So I've already measured out from that tip to this location. And I have actually some masking tape kind of holding, holding it on while I do this first one. But it's 50 inches, so the whole thing is laid out in terms of the placement. You don't have to guess on that. I do have them lined up on uh, on the spine. So the spine line that I marked on the first one. Let's bring this around. We just saw it flash, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but we'll get to that. So you see this line here that I marked along the whole thing. So that's that's really what I want it um, centered on. So let's go ahead and um, I, I'm going to go ahead and do this one and not film it and show you what it looks like at the end. And then we're going to look at the second one, which is going to be this one. Okay, I've done the first half of this double foot. First one I've done in 14, maybe 15 years. And uh, it's not perfect, but it's on there. And for my standards, I'm happy with it. I know that someone that does these a lot would look at me like, Jeff, do that over. I'm not, I'm not going to. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of the imperfection, but we're gonna work on the second one and I'm gonna show you, um, show you the process. So before we move on to the second one, I'm going to just show you a close up and I'm going to go ahead and, and rotate this around. What you want are really tightly wrapped threads and a straight edge. I know this front edge is not straight at all. I, uh, I actually use the back of a razor blade because I'm using the razor blade to cut, cut the, uh, the thread anyways, but you can kind of scooch it in like that and that'll that'll densely pack them um, that's the thread that I tucked in there we'll go over how you you tuck that in again not the cleanest uh, job there and I'm trying to hide it a little bit but as it climbs the real foot uh, it can get a little tricky there I feel like I did pretty good there in terms of wrapping that and then on this right side, you can see 
where I've tucked it, tucked the tag end in. And uh, we use these, these little threads, you know, these little scrap sections to, uh, to tuck that in. But I'm gonna start on, if my camera will focus, on this side and move inward doing this. I gotta say, um, I, when I had done this before, I didn't have all this to properly tension the line. Really nice way to to uh, keep it all tensioned. And uh, this rod wrapper and this, you know, this pedal, the control on it, really nice. It just, for me to do do that, have her, after not having done this, you know, for a decade and a half, um, first shot, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And having good equipment to, uh, good tools to do the job really does make a difference. I did position my laptop back here just so we can get a, you know, a good background so you can see everything that I'm doing. Let me zoom in on there. I'm actually sliding the, the, the thread um, shuttle over this way and let's see how far I'm gonna kind of center it on where it wants to be all right um, man I'm gonna I'm gonna remove the uh, the spine line there make this loop like this and just get a couple couple wraps around. This seems awkward, it is. There, I got I got two wraps, even though I got this big loop on the side. There's that three. And I'm just adding to it. I'm gonna keep going. And then once I get a little bit into it, I'm just gonna snug this in. So this is where I was talking about using the, the dull edge of the razor. I'm just gonna kinda scoot that in as I go around. And then I'm taking up the slack as I'm scooting that in. I know there's specialty tools for this, but I'm using what's right here. I'm pushing in and I'm gonna tug that, tugging that in. Push it in, pack them together as we go. And at some point you can just say, all right, I got enough tension. I'm just gonna come in here with a razor blade and take that off. This will actually be useful later when we wanna tuck it in. Um, all right, we're gonna keep moving in this direction and I'm going to take some tape off. It was cool digging through my old rod building stuff and seeing, all right, oh yeah, that's what I used to use for that. But Batson gave me, got me, you know, a new one of those or, I don't know, it's, uh, it's cool seeing how far custom rod building has come in that period of time. Uh, I know since then, you know, you've, you've just seen a lot more people that were hobbyists you know, have this be their side gig, their little uh, side business. They set up an LLC and build rods, I think, initially for their buddies, but then it becomes this this thing that they, they do for other people. And uh, you can certainly do them for yourself. That's what I'm doing. All right. Let's speed up through here. I'm going to get to the point where we are near that foot. And I may actually push back in the other direction before we get it. Because I like to have... I know I'm not showing that with my hand in the way. Um, I like to have these threads as den densely packed as we can especially leading up to it. It's just going to make a stronger attachment. So I'm just pushing it back. It's just starting to climb that foot. 
tell you what, I'm going to change camera position so you can see it from the other position. So sometimes it wants to, and I'm really going to zoom in on this thing, um, it wants to walk up a little bit. It really wants to walk back in the wrong direction and this is where I'm moving the, you can't see it, but the thread shuttle out ahead of it in the direction that, you know, that it's traveling. That way it's, you know, it's pulling it along a little bit, but I think nowhere more than as soon as you start walking that foot, walking up that foot, does it want to kind of flop back onto the prior wrap. And I'm just packing it as much as I can. You know, every rod builder there just walked that. Has has different techniques for keeping this smooth. Keeping the thread tight is part of that. And I know that this this thread shuttle helps with that, but I'm still pinching it to keep it tight. I think I got one on the side and then one on top by now. That's the toughest part. You just, you want to look for gaps. You're going to see that, you know, the blank like this. See that? See that? You know, and I made a big gap there just to show you that you can see black in between. If you see that near the rod, rod foot, you, you want to back it off and do it again or just scooch it in all right let me finish this up i'll get a little further along and then we'll show you how you tuck in the tag end okay we're about at the point where we want to reach behind and get one of these one of these scraps and we're just doubling it over and really what you're you're doing is you're creating a a loop that the tag end is going to go through at the end and then you will pull it back underneath so the loop is going to be on this side because we're going to tuck it in in that direction now i'm gonna snug it in How many wraps? I don't know. I mean, I'm probably giving it more than it needs. Alright, as we get Closer towards the end, we're going to trim off what we got, hold on to it, yeah that's probably enough, um, I'm just pulling this out to give myself slack, maybe next time I won't put the razor blade where it's hard to get, I just Cut that. It's got a little magnet on there, which is kind of cool. All right, so I'm holding this in place, and I have the tag end here, and I'm going through that loop that we created earlier. And once it's through there, I'll just pull this. And then the other end of the loop that we had, I'm going to keep tension there. All we're doing is tugging on that so where it neatly comes out the other side. Okay, now let me bring this around. 
so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so we have that tag end just kind of hanging right there. We're just going to hold it out at a right angle, get that razor blade in there, and it's done. First one I've done in 14, 15 years. So for the most part, you know, you just, you keep doing this all the way up with the remaining pieces that you got. Uh, it gets, goes a little bit quicker with a single foot. Once you get to that, um, I'll go ahead and put those on and then, uh, then we'll go with the, um, the tip guide. All right, let's take a look. The, uh, the next one here shows that it's 41 and an eighth from the tip. Okay, so I'm gonna have the, uh, have this guy ready to mark it. Put this right there on the tip, right there. And we'll set that down. And I gotta look at this again to see. Um, yeah, it's just on this side of it. So let's take a look at what I do just real quick with the masking tape to set it on there uh, before I start doing the wraps. All right, that's the mark. And everything that we're gonna do with this double foot, um, it's gonna be on this side. We got the spine line right there. It's gonna sit there. Let me let me zoom in on that for you. It's gonna sit right there. And in order to make this work, I'm just gonna get, I got a little bit of the, the masking tape here and I'll put a little, little strip off, set it here on the, just set it right there. I'm going to do a second one for the other side. I mean, just like a little piece. At this point, I, you know, I'm still looking at, and, and you can't really see it. I'm going to rotate this around so you can see the spine line there. We just saw it. Um, I'm setting it on the spine line. I'm gonna rub it off now that I'm I'm looking at it. And I'm gonna go real close to the inside. That gives me yeah, one or two turns with the first couple threads. Oh, that didn't stay. This narrow masking tape is really nice to have. I remember doing this before and just like cutting it, cutting with scissors these real narrow pieces, but this stuff's good. Okay, so we did that side. Again, as far this way as you can get it to let you have good purchase on the first couple wraps with the thread and then you will take that off as you start wrapping in this direction. I'm going to finish the rest and then we'll we'll come back and do the um, actually I'm not going to do I'll probably save doing the tip for the, the the very end which is simple it's like basically this hot glue gun stuff that you cram in in that hole on the end and just I actually use the razor blade again to shove you know to cut a little piece and just shove it in there and heat it with the lighter and jam it on there that's actually gonna be our last step maybe we'll go with um sealing up all these wraps but let me finish what i got and you'll see what that looks like just fyi i found a tool i like better than using the back of the razor blade to kind of scooch the uh the uh threads and pack them in together this little thing out of a uh, one of the flosser things is a really nice tool for 
for doing that, getting in there tight and packing the threads together. All right, I'll give you an update. I got one, two, three, four, five of the double foot, and um, I got these four single foot to go. I will tell you, I did need to to take even that <clears throat> this real narrow masking tape and cut it thinner. I just I just put a little strip of it there and just sliced it in half with a razor blade. And uh, just because when you get to these smaller feet, they uh, there isn't a whole lot there to grab hold of. Um, it was easier back here with this <clears throat> with this first one. Um, but as you as you get smaller and smaller it's uh you know the foot isn't as much it'll be easier with these because that is a longer longer stem to work with so i'm gonna give my eyeballs a break go do something else for a while come back to this and uh you know it's it's fun feels good to see the progress um there is no perfection here uh, but I'm gonna end up with a really nice rod. All right, uh, got all the guides on there. We're gonna we're gonna line them up by adjusting them in a minute. I can already tell that one's way off. Um, with these threads still loose and not epoxied on there, that's the time to to do that. We'll do that next. But I want to do this last little piece uh, that. Has the tip top on there the tip top is gonna go on like that not really like that but what we're gonna do I'm gonna put it on there because I need to put some threads there just to make it to make it look complete it, it looks weird if you have have all the guides without it and then you don't have that one but basically you get this um, this hot glue gun stick you heat it up you can actually slice a little bit off on a razor blade like that just that makes a little sliver we'll let that dry actually i'm gonna just knock that off what i want to do is to get little this is messy little slivers you know, you can smudge it on something and then and then cut it off, cut off the uh, little slices. But actually, I just rolled that into something that I'm gonna just jam in there. However, you can get some of this material into that hole is uh, is what you want to do because basically, yeah, I got. I actually just rolled it up and jammed it in there. Um, helps to have a pair of needle nose pliers. I don't. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna heat this and probably burn my fingertips a little bit. Um, you're just smushing it on there. You heat it up. This doesn't have to be straight for now. It's just, it's just got to be on there. Although it's not that hard to to stick it on there. So, all right. Now that that's on there, the the tip is on there, and and I can straighten it later. Like I'm going to straighten all these. We're going to look down the length of it, um, but I can finish the wraps and and get one last wrap there leading up to the the tip and then uh we'll straighten them and then we can um just kind of epoxy them all on there i'm taking the rod out of the wrapper we're gonna loosen the chuck and take this out and at this point what we're doing is looking down the length of it to see our actually the first thing we're doing and just holding our hands and saying it feels like a rod now which is is nice but 
what we're doing now is you want to look down I don't know, I'm gonna back up look down the length and see which of these is in line with the real seat it may help to put a reel on there and which which of them is out of line all right let's see if we can show you what I'm talking about we're looking I don't even get the camera set so that I'm looking straight. That's better. All right, first one and second are lined up pretty good. Third one looks good. That fourth one is good. Now I'm out of focus, but uh, that fifth one focus isn't right. My eye can see it. Uh, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth one is. Mm, to the left. Do you see it? Just a little bit to the left. It gets harder as you go further up, but that fifth one, one, two, three, four, is too far to the left, so I'm going to have to nudge that to the right. The third one's actually a little bit, just barely to the right. And I'm grabbing that and just little nudge fifth one was to the left it's hard to tell hey how much am I moving usually you end up moving them too far and then you gotta go right back but it's this is you know this is the process apparently I am left eye dominant it does help to get your face down close to the last little bit because it's hard to see that from a distance and uh, everything looks good here except for the tip and I just got to reheat that glue and rotate it a little bit to the right 